Hi everyone, how are you guys tonight? You guys, we are live here on the Brush by Brandy Facebook page and also over on my YouTube channel. My name is Brandy and I'm the owner and artist behind Brush by Brandy. Um, and I paint here live with you guys every Thursday evening at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, my husband, John, is here behind the camera. He's gonna help us answer any questions as we go. So pop on and ask any questions you might have. Um, I told you right after the new year that I wanted to kind of do some getting back to basics. So um, two weeks ago, we talked about different types. We're going to talk about wood stains and conditioners tonight. So tonight is all about everything you want to know about wood. Um, so I brought out a whole bunch of things for working with wood finishes. Uh, yes, question. sir, you behind the camera. How, how is wood made? <laughs> Well, when a, when a mommy would and a daddy would love each other very much. <laughs> All right, you guys, I want to talk to you guys about, I want to compare and contrast a whole bunch of different options for um, for adding colors to woods, um, what's out there, and how do you choose what you need for your particular look. So, oh, it's blurry? It's blurry. Sorry. Okay, so what I brought out, and I've kind of split these into two different camps, and oh, this one belongs over here, and I split them into oil-based versus water-based finishes because you can choose oil-based or water-based finishes uh, when you're looking at wood stains and colorants. And so I'll talk. I'll start with the very basics of stains. Um, number one, let's talk about uh, pre-stain conditioners. Huh. Sorry, uh, Facebook is saying it's really blurry over there. All right. Well, and shouldn't be. I don't want to. Stick yeah, usually in... Facebook's not the problem. Usually yeah. it's YouTube. Oh, yeah, Teresa came over here and said, yeah, yeah, uh, sorry, not Facebook, I'm sorry, YouTube. YouTube, YouTube is, is yeah, uh, sorry. YouTube, yeah, YouTube with their live streaming, it's super If you fun. guys only knew the setup I got rolling today, I got you <laughs> elevated to yeah. get you a good view. All right, YouTube just tends to be more buggy. Facebook has uh, lives nailed down a little bit better, so I'm live over at Brush by Brandy on Facebook if you're on there. Um, YouTube might be better on the replay. We can try that. Um, so we have no different setup than what we have every week. It's the same, same deal here. And our internet connection is good. We check it every time before we go on live. So, um, I get my gaming on before we go. Sometimes on. it's the live stream, but the actual video recording will be good. So sometimes you can check it out on replay and it'll be better. It just, it can't, it's not turning the live stream. Oh, by Michelle is on there. Let's see. It's uh, lunchtime. Hi, it was 11. You guys, Michelle's over in Australia. Yeah, we get uh, the Australians uh, are having their lunch about now, and we're ending our day in California. Okay, so uh, pre stain conditioners. Okay, when did I choose a pre stain conditioner? If you're putting on stain and your wood has a lot of variation in the color and you want to try to unify the color a little bit, make it look a little more consistent, a pre stain conditioner is a great idea. So, a lot of these old woods can come. Um, it, it's not going to remove stains at all, but it's going to help the wood accept um, stains more evenly. So if you've got any stains or unevenness in there that's obvious, you want to remove those before you start with your staining process. Now, pre-stain conditioner, uh, these are both from Minwax. It comes in a water-based and an oil-based formula. And how you would choose which one you need is based on what type of stain you're going to use. So if you're going to be using a water-based stain, you want a water-based conditioner. If you're using an oil-based stain, you want an oil-based conditioner. Let me pop these lids off and I'll show you what the consistency of this stuff looks like. Um, so it's, it's really watery, super liquidy, and it just brushes on really easily. There are alternatives to using uh, for, for a wood conditioner. You can use mineral spirits. It basically uh, fills some of the pores on the wood. So any spots where it's got, you know, heavier or, or lighter pores in the wood and it helps it take it more evenly. So I'm just going to dip into this can and I'll show you what the consistency of a wood stain conditioner looks like. Well, that like. looks like a new piece of wood. Yeah, this is a this is just a plain piece of wood. Um, I'm kidding because I saw the underneath as well. Yeah, yeah well, this... it's basically a sample board that I use for all kinds of stuff. So this is super liquidy. I can't even tip the can because I'll end up spilling it, but you'll be able to see it right away when it goes onto the wood. This is the oil-based conditioner. And I'll dip into the water-based conditioner also. And this you would put on before your stain. You brush it in, massage it into the wood. Massage. And then you would come uh, come back and you wipe away any excess. Uh, this is a little bit more milky. This is the water-based formula. It's a little bit more milky. But same thing. Very, very liquidy formulas. 
and you can see right away it just sort of saturates the wood but looks like a clear finish when that dries it does change the color of the wood just a little bit it adds a little bit of amber tones so if you're going to be staining that's something to consider um i should have brought out a hammer to be able to close these it's hammer time so I always have wood stain conditioners on, or on hand, especially with older pieces. I find that a lot of times I need the conditioner to get the stain to look even. It can look blotchy even if there's no stains in your wood. Old woods can just take stains a little unevenly. So a pre-stain conditioner, super easy to apply, totally worth having on hand. I'm gonna hammer this shut. These store really well. They don't tend to um, age in the can at all. These go a long way. Please never don't hurt them. Okay, so now once you've got your wood conditioned and you want to start adding color, you've got different options for oil-based and water-based conditioners. I'm going to start with the oil-based because they're a little bit easier, I think. So oil-based um, wood stains. I have a can of Varathane. This is a gel stain. This is Minwax Penetrating Stain. So as far as, um, uh, this is also a penetrating stain, the one from Varathane. I don't tend to care for Varathane stains and that's just because they don't store well. They tend to um, coagulate in the bottom of the can. They thicken a lot faster and they don't age very well in the can. Minwax stains, I've never had that problem with. So Varathane does have some different color options. This is sun bleach, which is a really pr pretty bleach wood look but they just thicken a lot more and I find they don't have the lifespan in the can and it takes a long time to go through a quart of wood stain. So I tend to prefer Minwax wood stains for that reason. This is their penetrating wood stain. I have these in a variety of colors. I'm gonna shake it, but I'm also gonna, you always wanna make sure you stir your wood stains when you're gonna use them. They can tend to settle at the bottom, the colorants can. Um, I usually wear gloves when I'm working with wood stain because I don't like my hands to be brown for a week after. And I can feel, I'm gonna try to pick some up off the bottom of the can and just show you guys. Okay, this is what settles to the bottom of the can. Can you guys see that glob right there? That's what you're stirring in. It's all the, all the colorants tend to settle at the bottom of the can. So even if you're shaking your wood stains, you want to make sure you stir it and you when you're stirring you want to pick it up from the bottom and pull those colorants up and then stir them in so it thins it out you may need to stir for a few minutes to get that fully mixed in versus this fair thing would stain i can already tell that this one's pretty settled and it's got a lot of thick stuff at the bottom okay so it's all watery on the top would you like another one um I'm, i can just um this one off. Okay, it's all watery on the top and down at the bottom. I've got like a probably a good man, a couple inches of settlement down there. I'm gonna try to hold this so you guys can see. I just find that these settle a lot, a lot, a lot more, and eventually that stuff hardens and you can't stir it back in. <laughs> Jeez, sure. <laughs> looks like gastrointestinal season in my office. <laughs> yeah, it, it actually <laughs> has the consistency of like a thick mucus. So it will, you can reintroduce it. Now, if you're going to be stirring woods or storing wood stains for a long time, you can pull them out and just give them a stir every once in a while. And that will help them store a little better on a shelf. Okay, these are oil-based, which means they do not clean up with soap and water. Okay. But both of these, I usually, um, I save old socks in our house and I save cotton socks. Um, I don't like um, synthetic fabric socks because they leave a lot more strings behind. So old cotton socks is what I usually apply my wood stain with. And I'll just dip that in the wood stain. You want to go with the grain of the wood. In this case, I'm not because I need to work in thin sections so that I could show you guys all this stuff on this one piece of wood. Okay, two different options for an oil-based wood stain. One was a light option, one was a dark option. Those are both penetrating stains. Penetrating stains means that it will seep deeper into the pores of the wood. Yeah, I probably will need either uh, or- Can you, you see those? A roll of shop did, towels. Did you see those right there? Did you? Oh, moisture sticks. Yeah. yeah, but now this one's got- Now what are you after? Well, towels? Uh, either that or here's, here's what I'm gonna do with this. You just gonna hand it? No, no! What the? I don't know if you've seen my floor lately. Oh, just lately. Yeah. yeah. 
All right, so I use a lot of penetrating wood stains and I use a lot of the Minwax penetrating stains. Um, I, I like all the color options that it comes in. I tend to have all the color options on hand. This does come in a smaller can also. It's a hardware store option, so it's really easy to come across. Just personal preference, a lot of people might like the very thing wood stains better. I just uh, tend to prefer Minwax. All right, gel stain. My favorite brand of gel stain is General Finishes. They make a beautiful um, gel stain and- Do me a favor, point at those again for anybody that missed it. This was your clear- These are Minwax Penetrating Stains. This is a lighter color. This is called Sun Bleach, oh, which is meant clear, to be sorry. a bleached wood look. So it's just a really light wood stain. Um, that color can be kind of hard to use because it all all wood varieties will take stains a little bit differently. And so when you're trying, it's easy to make a wood darker. So especially if you've got, I, I already have stain on my hands, which was literally my goal to not do tonight. Me too, and I'm not even using it. Yeah, like I said, I usually wear gloves when I'm working with wood stains, especially oil-based because they do not clean up very easily. Um, so you, it's, it's very easy to make a wood darker with stain. It's harder to make it lighter. I'm not going into wood bleach tonight because that's a whole nother process. Um, there's different types of wood bleach too. Wood bleaching is uh, is also not the most accurate process. It can take several steps. I find it's easier to get a bleach look just using a paint wash um, than it is using a light wood stain. All right, this is nah. just... Hey, Ryan Yvonne, come on now. She says, I usually put a cloth over her can before she hits the hammer. So she oh, doesn't yeah. get the splatter. Yeah, the little splatter off the ring. Nah. Okay, so this is gel stain. And gel stain is exactly what it sounds like. It's a stain, but it's in a gel form. So it's just a thicker formula. Um, General Finishes has beautiful gel stains. When I first started using gel stain, the first one that I bought was Minwax, and I think a lot of people make this mistake. Minwax gel stain sucks. It's like one of their, I love Hold their Hold on, let me pull up their stuff so you can do a five-star <laughs> yeah, review. Yeah, a five-star review for Minwax gel stain. <laughs> I don't know anyone who's ever used it and thought it is good. When I first used it, I and I was like, that was the first time I've used gel stain, and I was like, this stuff is awful. I'm never using it again. And it just turns out it's the brand. So Minwax gel stain will make you hate gel stain. Don't use it. It's not the same. It's not creamy. It gets sticky um, and it doesn't go on very well. So General Finishes gel stain is super thick and rich. Gel stains sit a little more on top of the wood because they've got that thicker formula. They're not going to penetrate as deep as a penetrating stain. So penetrating stains will go a little bit deeper in the wood. Gel stains will sit more on top of the wood. Same type of application, I can just use a rag and I can wipe it. The other thing you can get a gel stain to do is you can get opaque coverage. So look at how much darker this coverage is versus my penetrating stain. So my penetrating stain, I can see the wood grain through a lot easier versus my gel stain gives me a lot more opaque coverage. I can let this dry, I can let the gel stain dry and I can layer it until I get fully opaque coverage, meaning that I will not see any of my wood grain, but I will still have a wood color to it. You have to let it dry. I'm uh, obviously not doing that here on camera, but you can keep layering that and layering that and layering that gel stain until you get as dark as you want. You can also keep layering your penetrating stains, um, but you're never gonna get the opaque coverage that you can get with a gel stain. So, um, Gel stains, I like when I'm trying to camouflage something. If you've got damaged wood, discolored wood, um, if you've got places where you've sanded through your veneer, you can still get that wood coverage and a wood color to it, um, and it will camouflage some of the things underneath. The other time I like uh, gel stains is you can use them over an existing finish. So like this is a cabinet here, don't worry, I'm going to be sanding the top down on this one. Is gel stain an oil base? Yes, these are oil based products. Everything I'm showing you right now is oil based. You can use these over an existing finish. So let me find a spot here. Actually, the damage on this one's over on this side, of course. But I've got some scratches in this top. Remove these products, sorry. You just scare me when you do that. I'll probably scare you. Along with everybody else on camera. So, uh, do you want to come in a little closer so you nope. can see at least maybe take like just one even if it's just like Facebook? I've got some scratches on this cabinet that do go all the way down through the finish into the wood and I can take gel stain and I can use it over an existing finish and it will color 
some of those damaged areas. So then I can wipe this back. Okay, and it's just added some color. And this wheel, this will set up. You cannot use penetrating stain over an existing finish. It will just keep wiping away. It will never set up. Okay, so this will, you can kind of use this to kind of fill some of those damaged spots. Here, just I've got all this scratching in the top of this cabinet here. So it's not ideal, but you can use this. I can put it over the entire finish if I wanted to just make this whole top darker. I dare I, you. I can brush this on and I can let it dry and I can darken this whole wood finish on the top of this furniture piece. Obviously, that's not what I'm doing here. I'm going to be sanding this down um, and getting rid of these damaged spots. But this is a way you can darken your wood. So if you've got golden oak cabinets and you want to darken them and keep, but keep them in a wood family, like I said, it's easier to go darker than it is lighter um, and keep wood grain. But you can use gel stain over an existing finish and you, you can layer it to get the color that you want. So gel stain is kind of a cool product. Again, choose your brand wisely. Stay away from min Minwax gel stain. It's not good stuff. And I usually like their product, so that's not bashing on Minwax because I use their pre-stain conditioner and their penetrating stains are great. Okay, Howard's Restore a Finish. I think this is one of those products that's just a cheap, quick fix. I don't think it's a great like long-term option if you have damage to your furniture. Um, this is kind of one of those ways that you can quickly camouflage something, give it a polished look, but I think for long-term wear. Um, so this is just an oil that's got a little bit of colorant in it and you can put it over an existing finish. Is this the, oh crap, I put a scratch in it before Brandy sees it, I grab this? Yeah, or like, I mean, I would be aware of this stuff because a lot of people will use it before they list something on like, to sell it on Facebook Marketplace or something. They will they will put this on there to try to make the finish look nice. It's actually an oil too that you have to wash off before you can, um, before you can paint a piece. So some of this is like products that you need to be aware of that could be on the surface of a piece that you have to get rid of before you can paint. A lot of people use this stuff. You have to wash it off before you can paint it. So this is one of those oils like pledge, you know, that you have to wash off before you can paint to finish. So here it says restores color to faded wood. It does, but it's a temporary fix. It's going to be your quick fix for like, you know, a little, little bit of make it look nice. And then, uh, uh, blends out scratches. It's kind of like what I showed you here where you can use it over a scratch to add a little bit of colorant to it. But but this is an oil. I don't I don't use this a lot because I don't usually I'm not usually doing the job of trying to camouflage things. I'm trying to actually fix them. So if I've got a damaged finish on it, I'm going to want it like here. I wouldn't just try to camouflage these scratches and just call it good. I actually am going to take them out. So I have some probably it's not something that I use a whole lot. So that's Howard's Restore Finish. Um, okay, so we're getting into, well, let's talk about conditioners. All right, con wood conditioners are something that I do use a lot. Um, and this is my favorite one by far. Um, and this is Wiseall Furniture Salve. Comes in a container like this. It's a creamy paste. It's a hemp oil base. Now this you can use, if you're going to be doing wood stain, you can put this on your hands. And I do this sometimes when I'm working with resin too. You can massage this into your hands before you do your wood staining and it will make that easier to wash off. It also is nice and soft on your hands. So I've got spots here where I got wood stain on my hands. I can use this to take off that wood stain. So I just rubbed a little of that furniture salve on there. But I don't grab a rag that already has wood stain on it. Oh my gosh. At this point, everything has wood stain on it. So if I, I put a little bit of that salve on there and I can take that off. Okay, so it's nice and soft on my hands. I can remove stuff like this when I get oils, messy oils on my hands and that furniture salve and it smells good. It feels nice and clean. So it's a nice thing to have around. I will put this on my hands before I work with resin and then when you get resin on your hands, it doesn't wanna stick. But this is a wood conditioner shirt. So let me show you what I use this for. I have an old drawer box here. Very old drawer box. This is a, this piece is probably in the hundred year old range. 
Um, it's got really dry wood on the bottom. So when I work with pieces like this, I always make sure that I do the inside just as much of, as the outside. Now now you, did you say hemp oil? This is hemp oil base, yep. So I prefer to um, I prefer to apply my furniture salve with a brush. So this is just a nice round brush. I've got one dedicated just to furniture salve so that I'm not using this for paint and then for the oil-based salve. And I can massage this right into this old wood. It makes it smell nice. It adds some moisture back into dried out wood. So I do this to all of my pieces. This is just one of those finishing touches. Now, if I wanted to add some color into this drawer bottom, this is unsealed wood. I could put a stain on this if I wanted to, but just adding that little bit of the conditioner into the wood. If you're working with old pieces that are gonna be heritage pieces, you want them to stick around for a period of time, take care of the insides of them too. So super pretty. You can massage it in. I let it soak into the wood and then come back and buff away that excess. Can you put this over finished pieces? Yeah, you can. It will just add a polish though. It's not going to soak into the wood like this well. So it's just gonna give sort of a shiny look, but it's not gonna do anything to really condition the wood. So in this case, I'm putting it on unsealed wood. Inside of drawer boxes is where you're usually gonna find that raw unsealed wood. They also have furniture tonic. And the difference is this is a liquid formula. It comes in a pump and you could squirt it on there. And then same thing, massage it into your wood. I use a brush, you can also use a rag. Um, the furniture tonic has less waxes in it so it won't harden like the furniture salve will. So if you were gonna use it, you can use it to seal paint, um, but it's gonna be a little less protective, the tonic will, because it doesn't have the waxes in it that the salve does. The waxes are what makes the salve into a solid form versus the liquid that I'm applying. But the pump makes it super easy to put inside drawer boxes because I can just do one or two pumps inside the box, massage it in. I let it sit for a few minutes because I want it to really soak into that wood. Um, honestly, what I usually do is I will put the salve or the tonic on the drawer box and I will put this aside and I'll let it sit. And I don't, I don't buff it out until I'm going to send that piece home. Because if I'm sending this to storage, um, then I want it to sit. I'm not going to buff away the excess unless it's going to a home right away. I want it to get the full effect and soak into that old wood. So storage makes it sound like an orphanage. You can use this on leather, on stone, on stainless steel, um, plastics that will bring back some polish to plastics. But just that little bit of difference, it added like a finished feel to that raw wood. So that's a wood conditioner. If I want to leave it in the raw wood, I use that all the time on the insides of my drawers. I do the drawer sides as well. So same process, either the tonic or the sap. And I just massage it into the drawer sides. You can put it on your glides and um, what that does is when those, if you have wooden glides, especially when the wood rubs on each other, it will bring out a little bit of that scent and sort of throw some scent out into the room. So it's kind of nice to massage it into your wood glides. Um, but yeah, these are really old pieces. A lot of times the wood hasn't had any attention. So I just give it a little bit of moisture with a conditioner. That's something I use all the time. In fact, I order my, um, Furniture salve by the quart at this point because I use the case, it on just the about everything. Your um, your retailers can order it by the quart too. A quart is this size container, so nice and big. Okay, so that's furniture salve and tonic. All right, let's talk about some water based options for for coloring wood. Sean took all my colors away. Oh yeah. Sorry, just trying to save you some headache of. Things fall. All right, so uh, some of these are some options that are not um, stains. So one option is you can use a water-based stain. Um, Lily Moon has a whole variety of different colors of stain. Water-based stains are gonna be thinner. Obviously they're soap and water cleanup because they're water-based. Uh, they're gonna be thinner and they're not gonna have quite as much coverage as an oil-based stain would. Okay, so they go on really liquidy. You'll notice if I set this up, this one's gonna drip. Okay, and they give a really light coverage. That one, that's a white. Um, if you're using a water-based stain right over wood and it's white especially, 
Uh, woods have oils in them. The white will discolor over time. The oils will seep through that water base. So especially if you're gonna do a white stain, I'd recommend either seal it in a clear primer first or um, use an oil-based white stain. If you just wanna do a white stain over wood, it will discolor over time on raw wood. Um, you can use those as a glaze too, the water-based um, uh, water gel stains. Um, this is Pure Co has a water-based stain. These are really nice. This color is called Sable. This is a stain and glaze. So like, just like I told you, you can use your water-based stain as a glaze. These are called stain and glaze because you can use them as both a stain and a glaze. They're nice because they're soap and water cleanup. This is a little bit darker color than the white. That one's got a really nice coverage to it. Uh, Water-based gel stains, you can layer these too. You're gonna get a little bit more opaque coverage with because it's the gel, it's gonna sit more on top of the wood than the penetrating stain will. So uh, differences between that and watering down paint. Uh, we're gonna talk about that too, because I, I have some paint out too. Definitely an option. Um, the base is different. So a glaze doesn't have as long, or a, a glaze doesn't have as long of an open time. So here I've got some glaze. You can use glaze as your wood stain. Uh, this is Wiseau glaze and this color is called black walnut. Um, these have a clear, uh, usually a clear base which means the coverage is gonna be a little bit lighter, okay? But I can use, I can definitely use my glazes as a wood stain too. So some of these are sort of interchangeable and I do use paints and stains and glazes to color wood. Okay, so this is, um, this is Wise Owl Glaze and this color is called Black Walnut. Really pretty nice coverage. These don't have quite as long of an open time as a wood stain uh, would. You can add a little bit of water to it to elongate the open time, but you can get some really pretty colors out, out of it by using your glazes as stains. So that's from Pureco. This is Carts and Millie. This is their washed away. So this is water-based stain with a built-in matte sealer. Hmm. Super pretty color. This is Cox we, Jetty. We might, uh, do we know of anybody that's over there? Um, we don't know anyone from, from Carts and Millie, do we, like Tarnia? No. Okay, so this is a really pretty color. I use this one quite a bit. I've done a few pieces with this. Um, it's called Washed Away and the color is called Coughs Jetty. So this comes out, it looks like chocolate milk, I think when it comes out. Really light, pale sort of color. But this one I feel like looks like a, um, like a driftwood sort of color. Oh, hey, look. Her ears were burning. <laughs> Okay, so that's from Carts and Millie. That's washed away. And that one does have a built-in sealer to it. So you don't have to seal it. I usually do because if I'm putting it on raw wood, um, I like to maximize the sealant on the wood, especially when I'm sending that off to a customer. I'll just put a coat of sealant over it. But it does have a built-in sealer in there. All right, so my favorite colors to do a wash with, with paint. Um, I use this a lot for, for coloring wood. If I'm doing a whitewashed wood look, Restoration from Wise Owl, this is the color, perfect color for a bleached wood look. So let me pull down to an area that I don't have anything on. I'm gonna use this very bottom part down here. You can use water to um, keep your paint open while you're brushing it over the surface of the wood. Of course, that brush already has some stuff in it. Gosh. So what I mean is just add, add a little bit of water. You can even, um, Add some water to the wood beforehand to open up the grain of the wood so that it accepts the paint a little bit better. Um, the paint is going to sit on the surface of the wood, so it's not going to penetrate deep like a, like a penetrating stain, but that color is like the perfect color for that bleached wood look. So much easier than using wood bleach. And then I can wipe it back and it will expose some of the wood grain. So you can get, again, because it's paint, you can get opaque coverage or in that case, I wiped it away and I can still see my wood grain through So it's there. really just a surface color. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's your, your it's a paint, it's a coat yeah. of paint. And I would seal over the top of that. Um, the other thing is, again, if you're using a, a paint that's a water-based paint and you're gonna be doing that bleached wood look, put a clear, um, clear primer over your wood so that it doesn't discolor. It will eventually turn that to more amber tones. If you wanna keep the true color, 
um, over a longer period of time, put a clear primer underneath it. Okay, so that color's called Restoration, perfect for that bleached wood look. This one's called Military Bronze. This is a little bit darker, but this has a little bit of green undertones to it. So when you have a lot of red tones in your wood, so like mahoganies, this is, um, was this pine? Huh, this Teresa pine? hasn't heard of Carson Millie. You, uh, they're in Australia. They're in Australia. So we don't have a whole lot of them over here. I use it every once in a while, but um, it's hard because when I use products that are from like Australia, some of my American friends get upset because it's, it's not as easy to find. They do have retailers. They do ship to the United States. So it's really pretty product. I hope it takes off a little bit more. Okay, so this color is called Military Bronze. If you've got a lot of red tones in your wood, I'm gonna add a little bit of that water again. If you've got a lot of red tones in your wood, you can use a, a paint or a stain color that has some greens in it. And it will counteract some of those red tones. It's not a particular problem with this. Uh, pine has more of an orange tone to it, not so red like a mahogany. But I could put this, um, this uh, paint color with like a green tone to it and then I could put something over the top that's a little more brown and it will neutralize some of those reds. When you, um, it, it's, it's basic using the color wheel. When you mix green and red, you're gonna get a, a brown. So you're taking the red of the wood, a little bit of green in your paint or your stain, it's gonna make a brown tone out of it and take away those red tones, sort of neutralize all the woods. So, so military bronze is a nice color to use to do that. And there's the connection. can add a little bit of water if I want to thin that out and just get a really thin wash so that I can see my wood grain through there. Wait a minute, are you leaning that up against the garage door? Yeah, I am. Can what I, the? Can I, let's, ah! let's stay if I do that. What? Can I go up here? I'm trying to not hold it. No, it's oh just going to slide. Put a can in front of it. Well, then it's fine. I'm probably going to knock the can oh, over. Oh, this is still, I, yeah, I didn't say open can. Yeah. You know things aren't going to go. Not well. a fully open can. All right, let me show you one other option. Okay. okay, so we've done paint, glaze, water-based wood stain, gel stain. If you guys have questions on any of these, pop on and let me know what they are. Um, okay, this is Weathered Wood Accelerator. This is a super fun product. This is from um, Verithane. Um, they also have, there's a few other brands. Um, oh my gosh, I can't think of the name. Anyway, there's a few different brands that I have. This comes in a few different colors. So this is their black, which it creates a charred wood. This is a gray, and this stuff is pretty cool. Can I plug my heat gun in? Let me find a spot here that I haven't used so much. I'll probably do it over this one too, because let's see how it works. All right, I'll use the gray because I think it's a little more noticeable. So this is the equivalent of, you can put um, um, steel wool in vinegar and let it age in a jar. And that's basically kind of what this is. It smells vinegar-y. And I can put this on the wood. I need to stir that a little bit better. It goes, it's very watery, very thin formula. dig deep in here to get down there. But this stuff doesn't stain my hands like a like an oil-based stain does. And I can rub that into the wood. And then if you leave that overnight, it's going to age the wood naturally. Can you use these over wood filler or Bondo? Um, some you can. So the gel stain is, is what you're gonna uh, cover a wood filler or Bondo the most easy with because it's got opaque coverage. Um, paint, you can kind of camouflage those. Some wood fillers say that they're stainable, but they never stain the same color as the background. They will stain, they'll take a color, but is it gonna be the same color as your background? That's why they say when you're using a wood filler to try to make it the same color as your final product that you want. Um, so some will say they take stain and it, and it will stain to a different color. A lot of times I find myself, you can take like a gel stain or a paint and you can sort of paint in a little grain pattern to make it look you can sort of blend those spots in, put a little bit heavier coverage in one spot and lighter coverage around it and sort of make it blend in. A lot of times you're just doing sort of a faux painting when you're trying to cover damage like that. 
Sometimes you just accept like if there's little um, holes in the wood that that's character from the age of some of these pieces. Um, Bondo is probably less ideal, doesn't stain as well as like a stainable wood filler does. But I would say, yeah, a lot of times you're just camouflaging those spots with paint or a gel stain. So I just put on my um, weathered wood accelerator. I'm gonna accelerate it with the heat gun. Okay, and so what that does is it grays the wood naturally. So you can see a spot like right here where I've got the natural pine versus where I've added the weathered wood accelerator. So this is what, what weathered pine would look like if you let it age, say, out in weather. And I can add more coats to it if I want to get that darker. So now I've dried my first coat. I want to get it a little bit darker. And go ahead and apply it again. Normally I let this dry naturally. I'm just using the heat gun so that I can show you the, uh, the finished product, but I just let this dry overnight, come back and see if I like the look. If I don't apply another coat to it. <laughs> okay, so you can see how it starts looking sort of like a, like a uh, beige driftwood compared to the very raw wood here. Um, here, I'll show you the darker color of this too. This is charred, which is just going to give me a blackened wood. Um, where's the spot where I have natural wood? I'm running out of natural wood on here. I'm going to use this little area right in here just because I don't want to cover my test area. Okay, so that's very dark black. And then if I dry it, It makes it look like wood that's been burnt. It really brings out the grain in it. So that's much darker, but it's a natural sort of charred look um, and compare that to my raw pine there. So that's a, a different product than an actual wood stain, but you can build that up for coverage. These are all water-based. We've got tons of options that are water-based formulas, um, but I still like to use my oil-based penetrating stain, oil-based gel stain if I'm trying to camouflage something. Um, I use the, the restoration paint wash quite a bit. That's a great color for just doing a wash for that bleached wood look. Um, what else do I use a lot of? Obviously my furniture salve I use a ton of. I really like this uh, Coffs Jetty color from Quartz and Millie. Just, it's just a really nice light <laughs> driftwood sort of color. This is for you. How do you get Sean so involved? Um, she says her husband watches occasionally and grunts at you depending on what you are saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is it, is it grunting like, I wish you'd stop talking or what I what I just said was horribly wrong? Or is it more like everything Brandy turns on TV in the sun, I mean? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> how do I get Sean to say if we're so involved? He likes having groceries, mostly. He likes what? that. Yeah, he likes food. I have house. a job. He, well, yeah, but one job is different than two. I don't know. I guess, so then so then if uh, he likes vacations, then. If you buy the food, then I'll buy the vacations, right? Is that how it works? What? It's a, it's a joint bank account. So yeah, that's how I keep Sean involved. <laughs> um, no, he um, he is a huge help. In fact, tonight we actually got stuck because our kids needed a ride to their sports and our carpool. Um, people couldn't do it. And Thursday nights are like the one night that I can't drive. I'll drive anywhere and everywhere for the kids, but Thursday nights are really hard. So tonight we, she, we almost lost Sean tonight. We almost lost him to the carpool. It was that close. I'm so glad I'm not. It was that close. We talked about this earlier. I'm glad I'm not in that chat. It was super, yeah, it's a group, group chat <laughs> of moms hang. and it gets pretty in chat. So he almost had a carpool of seven kids. I don't tonight. like, there's too many maybes. Yeah, that yeah, was his choices. That. Either come help me or I'm going to put you in a carpool of seven kids. <laughs> Two of them are ours, yeah. All right, you guys, do you guys have some favorites? What do you like to use for your wood treatments? I mean, honestly, there's so many different options. Um, none of them are bad, oh, except for Minwax Gel Stain. That is a, just a bad product. I would not buy it. Um, honestly, they're awesome. I probably use water-based gel stain the least. I would prefer you don't hold back on your opinion. Um, I, I, like I said, it's easier to make wood darker than it is lighter, so I use a lot of my penetrating oil-based stains. 
Um, yeah, I don't know. There's so much fun products. Like everything I showed you is represented here. And it's a full range of colors, full range of opacity. <laughs> I can see wood more wood grain versus We have someone that grain. likes cars and Millie. Oh yeah, we do. Yeah, that's oh, interesting. Is she biased? Never would have guessed. Just totally huh. neutral. Just yes. Just totally neutral huh. opinion. Just yeah. someone in the back. All right. Yep. All right. We'll allow it. Random we'll party. Um. Yeah. I obviously use my furniture salve on every furniture piece that I do. I always pay attention to the inside. It's one of the last steps that I do. Um, if I need color on the inside of a piece, I've done furniture pieces where inside the doors looks a little dingy. It's old wood in there, unsealed. You can add some stain inside there and bring back the color to that wood as well. So pay attention to even some of the areas that you don't normally see. Um, obviously I do a lot of wood stain tops too. So I love having all this on hand because I can kind of decide what look I want. Do I want more grain or less grain? Um, I've only done one project where I was actually camouflaging old golden oak without sanding it all the way down. A lot of people want to do that. That's a gel stain. That's an oil-based gel stain um, project, I would say for sure if you don't want to paint. So anyway, that's all the options of wood colorants. So wood conditioners and colorants, a lot of good options out there. All right, you guys, um, I'm going to pop off. I did uh, I did those orange night sands this week. They're super fun. I love them. I want to keep posting pictures like every day just because I love the color. They photographed so pretty. I can't get enough of those orange night sands. So bear with me if you keep seeing those just because I love them. Um, I do have a new video coming out this week. It's going to be the secretary desk that we worked on, but I'm going to do that in two separate videos. Um, the outside, and I'm going to do the inside as a separate video because it needed so much repairs inside, and doing the inside of a secretary desk is a project in itself. So I will follow, uh, you'll get the video for the secretary desk, and I'll follow with the video for the inside of the desk. So why do they call them a secretary desk? No dang secretary works out of that thing. You don't think so? No. Yeah? I don't know. Aspiring secretaries? <laughs> Yeah, you, it's your life long yeah. I did have one friend when I was growing up who had a secretary desk in her room. I think they're great space savers because you get a desk and a dresser in one. Actually, my the piece that's sitting over the corner, that was my son's secretary. He had a secretary desk for years until he needed something bigger. The secretary desk was great. He could get a little, you know, just a worksheet of homework done and still have storage for Legos. And then we, when we got into like middle school, it was time for like a real kid desk. In fact, it's kind of funny because um, my son's big desk that we did is a, a Pottery Barn locker desk. And we wanted to add a shelf to it. So I Googled Pottery Barn locker desk and his own desk came up. And I was like, this is not helpful at all because I need to see Pottery Barn locker desk. And I'm just seeing the one that we already own. So that was a, I had to keep searching for more different versions of a Pottery Barn locker desk. So it's really cool though. He still has it. Still Speaking of locker desks, how'd that other one turn out? The one that was in Ashton's room. Oh, I never had to redo that one because that one has like a laminate top on it, like a like a formica top. I on just it, remembered the fine. gift that was contained within. Oh yeah, had yeah. To, he opened the door one day. It was locked when I got it. He opened the, figured out how to pick the lock, got it open. Twelve hundred dollars inside the furniture piece, but it was like a year after we got it, so I had no, no idea, idea who it was. Room. Yeah. So all right, you guys. So uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you don't already. Um, and I'll get that new video out to you guys uh, this coming week. And otherwise, I hope everyone has a great weekend. I'll talk to you guys next week. I think we're going to cover um, clear coats next week. We're going to go into the basics of different types of clear coats next week. All right. So I'll see you guys then.